Hi, good afternoon. This is Mr. Cassidy, and today I'm going over the PowerPoint for 11.4, Congruence and Transformations. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward lesson. Uh, the last two theorems seem a little bit confusing at first, but once you think about them, they do make sense. So let's jump into it. First, let me get my pen handy so I can annotate as I go. Great. All right, so first off, uh, the main definition we need is congruence. Uh, congruent shapes means that they're the exact same size and shape. And in this chapter, we've learned about three different rigid motions that keep the shape congruent. So we've learned about translation. You remember my dance at the beginning of last week. Uh, we have reflection and rotation. So all of those are called rigid motions and all of those make congruent figures because they map one of the figures, uh, one of the figures could be mapped onto the other. They match up perfectly. Not congruent means different size or shapes, means the angles don't match or it's just made bigger or smaller. So uh, our goal of this lesson is to be able to name the translation, reflection, or rotation that makes the shapes congruent and make sure that they are congruent. Let's get into it. Um, so identify any congruent figures that are matching in the coordinate plane. So what you want to do is you want to check sides. Um, in the first case, we have uh, the box, A, B, C, D. And what you want to do is just check the side lengths. Each side length is two, so that would match with uh, P, Q, R, N. And you want to think about what made it from one to the next. In this case, it'd probably be simple to say it was translated. One, or sorry, two boxes to the left. It would be two boxes for each corner. And then down four boxes would map the corners. Oh, sorry, down six boxes to get it all the way to the corner that corresponds. So you want to make sure if you did the same change, it would work. So there it is. Uh, that those squares are congruent because they were translated two units left, six units down. Okay, problem two would be this triangle. Um, the way we want to compare triangles is by their side lengths. Um, you can compare it. The flat sides are easiest, so this side is three. And I noticed that these, this one, oh, I noticed the one above it is also three here, GE. Then I've got KL is two, this vertical one. And Fe is also two. Uh, last, the diagonal. The diagonal should match up in rise and run. So it's rising two, running three. This is down two over three. So the outside like right triangle should match up. So yeah, those are congruent. And it looks like it was reflected over the x-axis. Last, triangle three matches with triangle STU. Sorry, triangle STU is a 180 degree rotation of triangle HIJ. And you can imagine how that would rotate to find the next spot. All right, so try it yourself. Identify the congruent shapes and how are they changed? I'll start now. I'll start with the parallelogram here, or the rhombus. Um, P-M-N-O. Now, one main thing is you want to make sure that the corners match. So if I'm talking about corner P, when I name the first one, let's say it matches with corner D. So I would say rhombus. And I name the corners P-M-N-O. And I see is congruent, is congruent. With rhombus, I'm going to abbreviate for your guys' sake, rhombus. Uh, and I need to go in the same order. So if I'm saying this is a translation, which it looks to me like it is, it slid the shape, then I need to go match up the corners in order. So P matches with corner D. So I'm going to say D first. Uh, next, M matches with A. So I'm going to say A first then N and O match with B and C. So I would say D, A, B, C. Uh, and here's why. Uh, because I've got a translation, it looks like it's two up and 
one, two, three, four, five over. So with the translation, of four units. Sorry, was that four? Let me double check. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. With translation, my bad. Five units right and two up. Two up. Okay, next one. Uh, so again, to match up these triangles, sometimes it helps to compare the outside of the triangle. So like KJ here matches with PQ. And the way I would do that is I can tell that this is two down, one over. So I'm looking for sort of the outside that matches here. So I can tell that this side matches with this side. It may help to label them first. Next, let's find the next one. Well, this one's two over, two up, two over, two up. Yeah, so this side matches this one. And these are both three across, so one, two, three, one, two, three. Now that I've got them congruent, I can say triangle. Um, let's start with the PQR. Is congruent with triangle. And for PQR, PQ, PQ, matched with sign J, J, L. So I really want to make sure that I'm using the right thing. Also, P was between side one and side two with the congruency marks. So the matching one for that would be corner J. Corner J is matching P. So I want to be careful there. And how I can tell is because of the congruency marks I already made. This is one congruency mark. This is one. And this is two, and this is two. So the angle between them was the one that matched. J matches up with P. Next, I'll do uh, corner L. L is between the congruency marks of two and three side. So I'm looking for two and three side. That's R. So, oh, sorry. I need to match the letter. So the second letter Q here has to match with the second corner of this one. In this one, Q is between 1 and 3, so K would be matching that. So I'm going to say J, K, and my last corner should match, that's L. How do I do that? Uh, this looks to me like it's a rotation. It looks like it went 90 degrees. Yeah, because that would actually match all those, so it's a 90 degrees clockwise rotation or 270 degree counterclockwise rotation. Uh, you could double check using coordinates. Our last is the, the rectangle here. And the rectangle goes, um, it looks like 180 degrees or reflection over the line y equals x. Either of those would be correct, um, but they are the same. I'm going to go, move, go ahead and move on. But yes, you could use a 180 degree rotation here would work. 180 degree rotation. Oh no, that's not quite 180 degrees, is it? No, that's a reflection. Um, if it was a 180 degree rotation, I think, yeah, it would be this direction. So uh, this actually looks more like a reflection over the mirror y equals x. It's getting messy here. So y equals x would be the line of rotation, and that makes them congruent. Uh, sorry, line of reflection. All right. So uh, congruence tran transformations. This is what we were just talking about. Congruence transformation is another word for either one rigid motion or a combination of them that keep the shapes congruent. Um, basically, rigid motion means the same thing as congruence transformations. Um, here, describe how they got there. Well, we want to start with A, B, C, D, since that's the one they're starting with. You know, I notice it looks flipped over to me. So I might say, looks to me like a mirrored reflection here. And it looks like it would do this if it was mirrored on the y-axis. That 
vertical trans vertical reflection. And once it's there, it would be pretty easy to translate it straight down. So to me, what would make sense here is to say it's a reflection over the y-axis, then a translation down. Now, sometimes there's more than one answer here. Sorry, it's getting messy. Um, but there could be sometimes other transformations that would keep move the shape to the new location. OK, um, you could try out number two and three. And here's the answers. Uh, for this one, I would probably do, hmm, PQR becomes this one. I mean, what I'm seeing is it looks like a rotation. I would probably do a 180 degree rotation, which would take it up here. And let's see here, how would that actually map it? it really helps to use coordinates. So four comma zero is P and I want to do 180 degree rotation. That should be negative four comma zero. That's negative X, negative Y. So that would be here. That puts P here. Uh, Q would be let's see here, two negative three. So negative two positive three is here. This is going to be Q. And R, R is currently at five, negative four. And if I did negative X, negative Y, that's negative five, positive four, negative five, positive four. All right. So I noticed that 180 degree rotation made the shape at least in the same direction as this one. And from here, it looks like it's a simple translation down uh, one, two, three, four, five units. So 180 degree rotation followed by a translation five units down. Five down. Okay, uh, let's see here. Second problem, to me, this looks like it's mirrored. So I'm probably going to mirror the shape vertically first and then translate it because I see this sharp corner G matches with C and they're facing different directions. So that to me looks like a, a mirror. I could do it a few different ways, but I'll go ahead and mirror over the line X equals two might be simplest. There's a few different answers here, but if I mirror that, I should get F here. And I get H here. And E would be three away. Yeah. So E is here. And once I've got that, I've got a translation up. So what I did to find that is I you sort of just have to play with the shape, see what made it change. I reflected over the line. It was a vertical line. V flipped over is the letter X equals two. And then I translated up, translated. And let me just count those units. One, two, three, five units up, five up. Now, don't get too hung up on this. Um, it really is tricky. You have to really, I don't know, piece it together. I sometimes put my fingers over the shape and try to imagine how it would look if it flipped it over. Um, if you're working in your journal, when in doubt, you can cut it out. You could cut out the shape and sort of manipulate it, moving it around to try to figure out how it maps. Remember, there may be more than one way to uh, skin a cat in this case. Um, and in this case, that means different kinds of transformations that would still work. So there are some theorems about congruence transformations. And again, this is the part of the lesson that seems a little confusing. But when, when you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. So first, the reflection in parallel lines theorem. What this means is if we reflected over two parallel lines, so here you've got a reflection over line k and then a reflection over line m, 
it means the same thing as a translation. So first two reflections of lines that are parallel would be the same as a translation because it just moved the shape. It ends up that two reflections over parallel lines become the same exact orientation as it used to be. Um, second, we can also compare distances. So like the distance from the mirror here is the same on both sides. Um, then this distance should be the same on both sides. Okay. Uh, also, we could see that how far away they are um, is there's a relationship there. Um, that if we connected a line from A to A prime, that line is, if you doubled that distance, it's the same as the second reflection. Okay. So here, uh, try it out. So we just have to sort of answer questions about it. So name any segments congruent to GH, HB, and GA. Feel free to try it yourself, journal page 319, and I'll go over the answers. So GH, GH is here. Um, the congruent line segments would be GH prime and GH double prime. Okay, check. HB, which ones are congruent to HB? Well, B to H apostrophe, that would be H apostrophe B would be the same as HB. Those are congruent. And GA, well, GA would be congruent with AG because they have to be on a mirror. So GA would be A, G prime. You can switch the two letters in order, but you do need to use the apostrophe on these to be correct. Okay, does AC equal BD? Well, let's take a look at it. AC, does AC equal BD? Yes, because the two lines are parallel. The two lines are parallel, so the distance between them remains the same no matter what, no matter how long those lines are. And what is the length of G to G double prime? Ooh, G all the way to G double prime. Well, one way to answer it would be it's the same as the length of H to H double prime. Because if these shapes move, because it's a translation, this corner moves that many units to the right, well, that means that this corner would move that many units to the right. Okay, carrying on. There are the answers, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, oh, I misread. I didn't see this bit about HB equals 9 and DH double prime equals 4. So HB is... HB is 9. Let me go and mark that here. And D h double prime is four so if that's nine then that means this is nine and that means this is four because they have to be that same distance remember this is just double what it is so that would be 16 total this would be 18 total and we could add those together to find the full distance from h to h prime in this case, um, uh, in this case, we get twenty six units. Hmm. I'm getting two different answers here. I'm going to have to come back to this one. Let's see here. Two BD by the properties HP. Oh, okay. Well, maybe one of you guys can find my mistake and comment below. Oh, I see. I doubled four and I got 16. So this is why you have to stick with problems because even Mr. Casty makes mistakes. Um, 18 plus 8 is 26. So yes, 26 units. I, 
can't answer your question right now. All right, so uh, final bits on this. Uh, here we have parallel lines. You could try them yourself. What translation maps, maps UV onto which segment? Translation maps UV onto U double prime, V double prime. Which lines are perpendicular to U, U double prime? Okay, that would be this one. Which line is R perpendicular? Well, because K and M are parallel, both K, line K, and line M are both going to be perpendicular to a line formed by those. Why is a V double prime the image of V? V double prime is the image of V because of two reflections. Two reflections make it the new image. And last, if the distance between K and M is five inches, K and M is five, what is the length of V to V double prime? Hmm. Well, what we have here is that this is five and it repeats this length here and this length here. So we're just gonna double it. It's gonna be 10 inches from V to V double prime. Okay, uh, now if we have two lines that are intersecting reflections, what that means is, uh, so K and M here are two lines that are gonna intersect and we're gonna reflect twice. So it's mirroring over this line to make A prime B prime and a mirror over this line to make A double prime B double prime. If we know the angle between the two mirror lines or lines of reflection, we can get the angle of the whole rotation, which is doubling the angle between the reflected lines. Uh, that seems really like a lot of gobbledygook, but it's really easy. Um, all we have to do here is say, well, here, if this is 70 degrees and it's reflected twice, how much is it rotated by? It's rotated by 140 degrees. 140 degrees would rotate it all the way to the second um, figure. There's our answer. I'll let you read it yourself. Let's move on. Uh, so here, how do we get from F to F double prime? Double your angle. 116 degrees rotation counterclockwise. Clockwise. All right. That covers our lesson. 10 point or 11.4 and that concludes our chapter next week on to chapter 12 final chapter of the book and we'll wrap up the year with some review i hope you're doing well and i hope you have a wonderful afternoon